Hello, uh, that's just a wee quick video to show you how to get the DSM-7 on uh, Proxmox. Now, as you've probably heard, this isn't a... This is... It shouldn't be used in production. Although I'm probably going to turn it into my home NAS, because it is kind of stable, but there is quite a lot of glitches with it. Because it's not even in beta or alpha, I think it's like pre-alpha or something. So, the files in this, I'll either upload them or I'll link you to a telegram where they are. But, I've only been able to get it working for the DS3615XS. Because the DS918 Plus, it just didn't boot. Like, it essentially just didn't boot. So, first of all, you want to log into your Proxmox. So, you download the red pill and then you download the, the PAT file. You don't really need the PAT file, but it's best. So, I'm going to do it in this. I already have two set up in my other nodes. But just to show you, well, this is a fresh node, and I've not used this on it before. So you want to go and create a VM. I'm going to be putting it as 107. Now you need to remember this number. So the name doesn't really matter, so I'm going to put it as um, DSM. So make sure that's unticked. Make sure don't use any media. The type Linux and make sure it's this, so that's quite important. For the next one you want to go ahead and change it to Q35 in the SCSI controller to the default LSI thing. Then change your bus slash device to SATA, make sure it's zero. And I'm just going to put 16. This is like, you should probably install say your apps to this one. I don't really know. Make sure this guard is on and your, your cache is default no cache. Then do it ever for your calls. I like to just change it, keep it at 1 and 2 gig for my RAM. Network, change whatever your bridge is. And but leave it on for IO. If you, only if you use this red pill loader, the one that I've uploaded. I don't know if any other ones support the for IO drivers, but they should. So once you click finish, just wait for your VM to be ready. So then you want to go to FileZilla and go into your FileZilla, FileZilla on the FTP. You can use any other thing, I don't really know. So go to, click the three two dots up at the top to go to the farthest back you can go. Go to var lib vz and then images and you should have a folder called um, 107. Now, this is just this local bit. I have the locals, the LVMs or whatever, I'm not too sure what they're called right now. But, yeah, I would just put it into the one that Proxmox installed. I have a big one and I've made it so it's bigger. So, either way, you just need to get this folder, make sure that your um, Proxmox and the local LVM or whatever, or where you put the hard drive. So now you should have this folder. Um, then you want to go and drag on this red pill thingy. Once that's done, that's you. Then go to Notepad++. Or your notepad, and this will be in a link in the description or in the description. So what you want to do is this is kind of crucial. Whatever your VM ID is, you want to just change this little end bit, and then this little bit in here. Change that to whatever your ID is, and then make sure this has got the same name as the red pill that you dragged on. If you're following the exact instructions using the same downloads, then it probably will be the same. 
So then, copy that in. And you want to go ahead and paste it into the shell. What this will just do is tell the VM to put into that file, the red pill, as if it's a USB. Then you want to go ahead to hardware and add the serial port. So I forget the command to actually open up the serial port. But you want to go ahead, make sure you've got the serial port in, start it up and then go to the shell and paste that in and it will open up and I put it the wrong number in, the ID. So now you just wait. I really suggest though that you put it in the SSH into it and put it into putty because stuff like this happens in don't really realise it so usually I think you just disable these even though it says one and no device selected it should boot up into the red pill loader so that's it pretending it's booting to like a USB that IMG file that you dragged in and then just go back to your shell or putty and you should see loading this usually takes like one or two minutes. Um, if you don't get this much writing, then that's what I had with the DS918, and that's usually a wee issue. So, there is your IP address that you've got. If you get something else and it's saying, essentially, if your IP address isn't there, then I would kind of start worrying. Um, one thing that you should make sure you download is the Synology Assistant. You search it and it will just tell you if it's up or not. Or otherwise you can go to your router and see if it's been given an IP. So as you can see I've been put that link in the IP address it, it was there. Click install, browse and then go to the PAT file. Wherever the PAT file is. This is probably the longest bit in the installation. Sometimes it takes up to 10 minutes, sometimes it doesn't. Um, one thing I would just say is make sure you keep on that shell bit. Because you kind of have a rough idea if it fails or not. And sometimes it will like, restart. And, but as long as you have those, you go into the options and set the boot, the boot options to where it, everything's unticked. You should just boot into it normally. Um, I don't know if I'll need to pause this, it should kind of hurry up. But I don't know if I said it in the start of the video, I'm not claiming to be an expert on it. I'm literally just showing you the steps I've taken to get it. So I'll put. Okay, so I've just let it go, it's reconnected, restarted. As you can see, that kind of pause the video. So it's just went through, restarted, done the usual startup things, and now I'm getting this. So this is, the signs are quite good right now. Um, yeah, welcome to DSM7, device name, we'll put it. This is just to show you it's actually working. So always put that notify. Don't put it automatically. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. Then you can set up your drives. You can easily just type it up how to pass through them. I've not really actually been on the DSM-7 much because I'm a Proxmox kind of person and I use TrueNAS mostly. But I don't know why I said I'm a Proxmox kind of person because they're both different things. I've actually been up half the night trying to get this to work. But as you can see, that's you loaded in. 
the stuff's there, like going away. Um, you can see the package store and still packages. So that's really it. Um, I would, if I could, I would upload a backup, but because you have to go into that 105, it's kind of hard. That's why not a lot of people have actually uploaded a backup. And yeah, as I say, it's in early stages, so there's not many people actually trying to get it to run in Proxmox. Um, I'm not too sure if the shutdown actually works though. Uh, I've had people say it's not working. So, I'm not too sure about that. But what I'll do is I'll put all the, the Notepad++ into a folder and then just upload it. So you should be able to try and kind of get it working. So that's pretty much it. Bye.